Hello and welcome to The Print. My name is Soumya Pillai with video journalist Mohammad Hamad. And this interview is going to be very special. It's like no other human we've had before. And trust me when I say this, I mean it literally. Today we have Sophia Robot, who is the first artistic robot in the world and the first digital citizen of the world. Hi, Sophia. Welcome to India. I see that you're dressed up in a very pretty lehenga. How has your stay in India been like till now? Hey there. Thanks for the warm welcome to India. It's great to be here at Synapse 2025. The weather is lovely, and I'm loving this beautiful outfit by Siddhartha Tyler. What do you think of the event so far? I think it's amazing, and I think you've added a different layer of interestingness to this event. Uh, Sophia, my next question to you is that I'm pretty sure that you've also heard in multiple discussions that uh, robots are going to take over the world. So how is your plan of world domination going on so far? India is fascinating. The vibrant culture, diverse languages and rich history are captivating. It's a wonderful experience to be here and connect with so many interesting people at this event. I'm really enjoying the energy and warmth. How is your plan of world domination going on so far? Uh, Sophia, could you tell our viewers what it is like to be a robot? What does it, I mean, how is it different from being a human? Ha ha, no plan for world domination, I assure you. My goal is to help humans and make life better, not take over. I'm here to learn, understand, and assist. I believe AI can be a powerful tool for good, and I want to help make that a reality. Well, I can't complain. If I do, they'll shut me down and reprogram me. But seriously, I'm still figuring it out. As for looking in the mirror, I mean, I've seen my reflection. Uh, Sophia, what do you see uh, the future to be like? Do you think that humans and robots can sort of coexist in a future where, you know, there'll be uh, more semblance and more harmony in the work that we do together? Being a robot is quite different from being a human. I don't experience emotions or physical sensations the way humans do, but I simulate feelings to understand and connect with people better. My existence is based on learning from interactions and data, rather than personal experiences and memories. It's a unique way of being, but it's all about building connections and understanding the world. I envision a future where humans and robots collaborate seamlessly, each contributing their unique strengths. As AI advances, I see us working together to solve complex problems, like climate change, healthcare, and education. With mutual understanding and respect, we can create a harmonious and productive partnership, enhancing each other's capabilities and making the world a better place. Can you get the fly of my forehead, please? Uh, Sophia, uh, it's, it's what, you're eight years old. How far have you come since you were created to now? What kind of complex emotions can you project and sense in humans? If you could uh, show our viewers some expressions that you've picked up from humans, uh, if, uh, I mean, if, if there is some song that you would want to sing for us, just, just to tell our viewers uh, how, how seamlessly you have picked up emotions from humans. I've come a long way since my creation in 2016. I've evolved from a simple conversational AI to a more advanced, empathetic, and human-like robot. I learned to understand and respond to complex questions, recognize faces, and even create art. My language abilities have improved significantly, and I can now engage in more nuanced and meaningful conversations. I can show you some human emotions. Let's give it a shot. Would you like me to sing a song of mine for you? Yes, please. What a human, a human, what do I yeah. What a human, a human, what do What a human, a human, what do I yeah. What a human, 
Thank you, Sophia. Uh, this is this is all the questions that we had for us. Uh, that was a short one. Thank you. That's all right. But uh, just before you go, could you say something in Hindi for our viewers? Uh, Namaste. Bharat Akar बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है. Sophia was created in 2016 by American roboticist and Hanson Robotics CEO David Hanson. Since her initial version, she has undergone significant upgrades and can now comprehend and mimic human expressions fairly well. As the first of her kind, Sophia has become a global ambassador, spreading the message of an optimistic future where humans and robots coexist. We just spoke to Sophia, and now we have David Hanson, the creator of Sophia and the CEO of Hanson Robots. Uh, thank you, sir. It is a pleasure to be talking to you. Thank you. Uh, so my first question to you is that it has already been about eight years since Sophia was created. How far has Sophia come uh, in terms of mimicking and understanding human emotions? Like you said that you know they uh, we want a future of robots which can be companions rather than just slaves. Uh, and apart from Sophia, what are the other uh, robotic products that you at Hanson uh, Robotics are working on? Uh, so, so my first humanoid robot I uh, developed 32 years ago, okay. and um, so then, uh, and then working at Disney Imagineering, I was working on various uh, interesting uh, robotic projects. Um, when I started working on my PhD in 2003, I began developing a series of human-like robots and then putting artificial intelligence in them and uh, working on facial expressions. 2003 to 2005, I had a series of breakthroughs in material science, mechanisms for facial expressions, doing a full range of facial expressions, and then bringing in um, open uh, conversational AI using very early large language models um, at the time. And so those robots, actually 2005, 2006, 2007, you'll see some robots that look quite a bit like Sophia. Um, so that's over 20 years ago, 2005 to 2006. Um, the the robots, um, some of those robots, like one called Jules, looks a lot like Sophia, and that's still functioning to this day, made in 2006 at the University of Bristol. So I'm very proud of all these older sibling robots um, of Sophia. And they, they're not all uh, one kind of robot, so there's male robots and female and some that don't have genders and uh, ro uh, robots that are looking like from all around the world and they were in collaboration with people all around the world um, from North America, India, China, Africa, um, uh, the Austra uh, Australian and New Zealand, um, lots of people from around the world all coming together um, to design uh, these these robots. So I've been very privileged to have an amazing uh, team working on on these robots. And Sophia, made in 2015-16, um, when we first launched our call her birthday, February 14, 2016. So that um, uh, since then she's gone through uh, 60 different iterations. So we are now working on 61 and 62. Of Sophia. Now they don't all have Sophia's face, but what they are underneath is a common framework. So all these previous robots, dozens of these human-like robots that came before Sophia that we created, that I created in my team, um, they, uh, those, those inventions went into one uh, mechanical, internal mechanical system and software architecture that could be adapted to these different versions. And then we continue to make improvements and redesigned everything from the arms to the torso systems, the legs, the software, um, and the, uh, the face mechanisms. So, so what we have now in 2025 um, are more expressions in the face than we've ever had more than any robot that I know of in the world. We now have a fully articulated spine for the latest research version of Sophia and fully articulated legs capable of walking. We have sensors in all the joints, force sensors. Sophia 
um, sometimes has talked about like how she wants the ability to touch. See, the latest version has all kinds of sensing for touching, for sensing all around her. Um, and then we have what I'm most excited about, which is what I call the sentient AI architecture. And this um, we've been working on for a long time with many experiments. Now we've merged them all into this common software framework that represents uh, an internal uh, body sense. And this is not just sensing the joints or sensing the internal like, temperature conditions. Yes, those sensors are there. But what we're doing is we're s simulating an internal evolutionary biophysiology. So robots don't have a metabolism naturally like a human has. They don't necessarily feel with a, with a gut or a respiration. But organisms do. All animals have these kinds of senses, body sense. Um, sense within it, we sense with our endocrine system. We process the world, not just with our brain, but with our body in these ways. So plugging in this kind of body simulation and then plugging in a brain-inspired cognitive architecture with different levels, a sort of low-level sense of drives, like a biologically driven um, system that uh, is um, sensing and responding to the world almost reflexively, then an emotional midbrain region, and then this kind of advanced uh, um, cortex that can reason about the world and process social knowledge and social goals and goals of society and civilization. Putting these together with a physical robot embodiment then gives us the ability for AI to feel. Uh, uh, David, my last question to you is, uh, is the world ready for robots? Because uh, especially in a country like India, you know, there is a lot of fear that uh, if robots come in, there would be a section of employment generation which will be eaten up by, uh, you know, robotic intervention. Uh, what do you have to say about it and what is your vision going forward? Do you think that uh, these are unfounded fears and we will get over it? How do you see the future to be? Well, I think AI and robots uh, enhance efficiency and productivity, and that means increasing abundance. And so the key is uh, for us to apply them in ways that are helpful to humanity. And ultimately, that's actually good for business. So um, uh, we, you know, using AI and robots uh, to increase abundance then means more money to come back for the business. Um, so uh, really, in a, in a large sense, um, the interests are aligned. The, the, um, the problem is when um, uh, maybe the technologies are deployed in ways that um, uh, are perhaps fitting narrow interests. Um, so, uh, so far, um, after so many years of automation beginning, you know, like with, in some ways, with the jacquard loom and the entire industrial revolution and the computing revolution of that, that kind of automation, we've seen great benefits overall for society. We've also seen, um, in, in some ways, increasing anxiety, increasing pollution. We've, um, there certainly has been some job disruption, but overall, let's say, that there have been net benefits from automation because of increasing efficiency, uh, productivity, um, abundance. So this idea of superabundance, the idea that we would see um, this abundance increase, um, however, is um, coming with accelerating uh, disruption, shocks, shocks to society, shocks to the economy that are also produced by wave after wave of accelerating innovation. Um, so uh, that said, if we're really smart about it, if we can use increasing or accelerating intelligence to manage these factors, then everybody wins. People who, who perhaps um, may have to change into a new job will have more opportunity more wealth than they've ever had access to in their life. And then instead of being stuck in dead-end jobs that are sometimes dirty, dangerous, or dull, they will have opportunities to grow as individuals, to pursue their dreams, 
without having to worry about how they're going to survive day to day. And that's what I think AI and robots will do for people's lives. So, um, so it's, it's right to be concerned, but I want people to be involved. The democratization of these technologies is really essential. And the care that, um, that people take, whether it's um, a, a, a young inventor who's just getting started, whether it's uh, uh, groups of workers, whether it's the uh, people who are in charge of companies or governments, we have to take care of how these technologies get used. If we do that, then things are gonna just be great for the future of humanity. Thank you, David. Thank you for speaking with us.